My name is Sam. This is the AWS Networking Series. Today's topic is the internal route and the inter VPC route. In this video, we will use this diagram to help us understand the concept. What we will focus here is traffic within the AWS internal network. So our focus will be in this part. Now, assume you are now creating a new subnet with nothing else configured on it. Therefore, we will also put our little man here to indicate where we are in this diagram. Assume now you would like to direct traffic to go to the AWS Public Services internal. To be more specific, AWS Public Service have two kinds. One is S3 and DynamoDB. The other is all other services, such as Lambda or API Gateway. To allow traffic to access from the subnet to S3 or DynamoDB services internally, we would need to first create the so-called gateway endpoint on the VPC we have here. With this gateway endpoint on this VPC, we will now be able to direct our traffic to go through this gateway endpoint by configuring the route table used by this subnet. Then we'll be able to access S3 or DynamoDB services privately, internally. Next, if we would like to have our traffic access the Lambda or API gateway services internally, we will need to first create so-called interface endpoint on subnet. With this interface endpoint on the subnet, how we are going to use it is different from this one. We will not configure for table. Instead, we will use the DNS name of this interface endpoint to access the service in this area. And to be more specific, what's really happening here is there is some kind of Lambda VPC in the multiple subnets in this VPC. And inside this VPC, there's a so-called Endpoint service. This service, endpoint service, will be guarded by a little bit. So what we are really accessing here is really to access this NLB instances. And this link and this route is called private link. As you can see here, the private link here are provided by AWS by default. And that means we can also create our own custom endpoint services. So moving to the next part, assuming now you have another VPC2. Inside this VPC2, you also have a subnet. Now you would like to create a custom, custom endpoint service here. The same, you will have an LLB instances to guard this endpoint service. 
In the same way, you can also direct your traffic through an interface endpoint to access this Angular B, which is an endpoint service. You can see here, this route is actually traffic between two VPC. This is actually one of the way you can use to allow traffic between VPC. Next, another way for us to allow traffic between VPC is to create VPC endpoint, VPC peering. So with this VPC peering built up between these two VPC, now we can config the traffic to go through this VPC peering by configuring the route table of this subnet. So we will go to its destination of some subnet. The difference between private link and the VPC peering Many, there are two reasons you will opt for private link. So first of all, private link allowed overlapping IP between subnets because it doesn't really use IP routing. You can see here he used DNS name of this interface endpoint. So it doesn't matter whether the IP, C, I, D are, are the same between two subnets. Second, private link allow transitive networking. We will not talk about in detail about what is transitive networking here, but it will be a good reason for you to opt for private link to allow traffic between two VPC. So this is the end of this video. This is the introduction for these three main routes you can have for internal route and for inter VPC route. Thank you.